Testing one, two, three. This will be the July 18th, 2018 City Council regular meeting. Hey, John. Hey, Mark. Didn't everyone like to call the order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach, July 18th, 2018, approximately 7 p.m.? Please join Vice Mayor Montanaro for a moment of silence in the pledge. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here this evening to make decisions for our city. Please uh, watch out over our first responders. Please watch out over our military forces that are deployed across the world in this country. Um, and help us to make good, de good decisions this evening. Amen. If you'll join me in the pledge. Pledge of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, the podium is open for citizens' comments. This will be for non-agenda items. So it's open for non-agenda items. Good evening. Dale Abrams, Ocean Street. Lenore, did we get this mic fixed? Excellent. I love the new recycling bins that are on Sunrise and Shell Street and Grant. And the question is, when is Magellan and DeSoto going to get them? Uh, those next rounds are in the next budget cycle, so we'll get them in there. So next year? Yep, right after October starts. We can get them. Okay, cool. And does waste management pick up the? No, city, the city staff does. Uh, the city staff mm -hmm. does? Okay. All right, so. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about Rodney Smith putting cans in my recycling bin in the you future. You no longer have, have to worry, to worry about, about that. Rodney, you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, they're really nice, and I think that's a great idea. Well, thank so you thank you for that. doing that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, the still open for non-agenda items. Non-agenda items. Non-agenda item, please. Hi, my name is Stel Bailey. Um, I just have one question. Uh, City Manager Courtney Barker, are you still currently a member of Satellite Beach Health and Hope for Tomorrow private group? Um, well, I think the um, issue we're having is I can be a member of it, and I, and I don't mind being one. But every time I respond, I have to screenshot it to comply with public records. Um, so if I'm going to be on there a lot and answering a lot of questions for people in that particular page, we need to add it to our public records archiving program. And I think I've talked to Dr. Greenwald quite a bit about that, um, and, and she had conveyed that to you. Mm -hmm. um, if that's not possible, then po you'll, I can stay on there to see what the concerns are, but you just can't, you won't see me respond very much, largely because of that issue. Okay, because okay. it's a violation of Sunshine Law, correct? If it, it, only if I um, don't screenshot it. It's a public okay. records issue, not, okay. not Sunshine. Okay, okay, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. your time. Thank you. Podium still open, non-agenda items. I would like to point out that this Excuse is me, a... Ma'am, you yes, need sir. to state your name and where you'll, and your address. Um, your name. My name is Erin Hegedus, and I live in South Patrick Shores. And I wanted to address the fact that the Satellite Beach Health and Hope for Tomorrow has always been intended to be a private Facebook group, not for city official use, definitely not for screenshotting, this is a, a Facebook page that people share their medical history and their private addresses. So I just want to make it clear for the record that this was never intended for a city officials to make any sort of screenshot. That's exactly why the Sunshine Law is in effect. Well, you all are welcome to mm -hmm. take me mm -hmm. off the group. <laughs> I mean, somebody added me. I didn't, I didn't um, ask I to be I will also it, say, so. no, you requested to be part of this. Just a directive to here. Okay. okay. Um, Ms. Uh, Courtney Barker had to request to be part of this group. She had to be approved. Um, there was another council member that also requested to be part of it, and she was smart enough to have politely removed herself this morning when it was brought to her attention that this violated the Sunshine Law. So I just I, want to like say to that okay. there are those of us in the community that are not okay with screenshotting anything on that page. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for your comment. If we wanted it public, it would have been comment. made public. Appreciate it. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Public um, podium still open for non-agenda items. 
I, I just need to respond Please. to that because there's this. Um, we we don't have to be part of it. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll get out of it today. We were, we were invited to be there, so that's why we're there. If people don't want us on there, we'll be glad to not be on there. I mean, it's no big deal. Um, secondly, it's it may be private, but there's 3,000 members to that page. Um, so in screenshotting, I screenshot my comments to comply with public record law only. Um, I don't go screenshotting everybody's, and, and anybody in that group can screenshot it too. So, um, you know, so to me, this is creating a, a adversarial relationship where there doesn't need to be one. We're all trying to work for the same purpose. If there's, um, you know, a problem with that, people can pick up the phone and call me and let me know. Um, I haven't got one phone call from anyone that has a problem with it. So, um, I put my phone on there. I put my cell phone for people to call me. Nobody's done that. Um, so, yeah, we can we can certainly leave that page. I think um, there's probably people on that page that would like to see our responses. No big deal. But if that's the, what the admins want, by all means, take us off. You know, we don't need to be there. So. For now, oh, okay. I'm going to leave this to your discretion since you are the one that's on it. And do you have anything you want to add? To I just wanted to add that when I originally, just because I'm a council member does not mean I'm not a human being and I haven't lived here for 30 years. And my father died from cancer. And when I originally added that group, added myself to that group was for those purposes, for my personal purposes. The only reason why I made any comments is because I'm noticing misinformation and I wanted to make clear that everyone understood what was going on. There's no personal attacks. No. There's no personal tax. There was no vendettas. There was there was nothing ill will. It was just simple data and information, and that's the way we work. And I removed myself because of the information being misconstrued, and I also didn't want to be involved into the streaming of, of what was going on. I have people on there that I'll be having coffee with that I've had conversations with that are good people, and we'll have individual conversations at those times. So, Thank you. I agreed. I think it's creating an atmosphere that doesn't need to be – Created and uh, and we're um, sorry. We're, no, there's no discussion on this. I'm we're sorry. all here to for the same purpose. I have children here. I've lived here since I was 11. I went to Satellite High School too. I graduated from there. Uh, you know, to to think that we're any different than you is is ridiculous. Yes, and um, so we're excuse me, ma'am. There's no discussion. You had no, ma'am. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one more warning, and then I'm gonna have you removed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The podium is still open for citizens' comments for non-agenda items. Non-agenda items. Hearing no further, uh, we'll move on to city council comments. I have none. Okay. Mark? No. Okay. Mindy, any further? No. Yeah, I attended um, on the 9th the Beautification Board workshop meeting that um, Courtney was at, and the Beautification Board is going to be putting forth some information um, to Council on how they're addressing um, their new uh, mission statement and some other things that they're looking at doing to uh, maybe get some more awareness to the Beautification Board. I also attended, and, and Courtney was there also on the 12th, um, Bobby Pruitt, the new principal at Satellite High, had um, one of his update meetings at um, Delora and Satellite High, and um, I'm thrilled that he's there as the new principal. Um, he gave us a lot of good information about um, what's going on, what their plans are, and it was a great meeting, so I'm, I'm glad I was able to attend that. And, and I just want to say one thing just for people that are out there. Um, there were comments made about sunshine. What was being done had nothing to do with sunshine. It has to do with public records. And any time any one of us sitting up here tweets, texts, emails, it's public record. Regarding it's city, not regarding city, regarding city business. It is not sunshine issues that were being talked about by the two individuals who are up here. It's public records. And Florida has very strict public record laws. And that's basically what was being done by these individuals, is making sure that any time they commented on something that had to do with the city of Satellite Beach, 
That is a public record document, not a sunshine issue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just one thing on the school principal changes. I had the opportunity to meet principal of Delora. And you kind of know when you're getting old, when you look at him, he starts to laugh at you. And he said, you remember me growing up at your house. <laughs> so uh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, great guy, Jeremy, uh, was a soccer player here, hung out with the Hobgoods and the surfer. And really great to see, I think, what we're the principal and the leadership we're getting at the high school and the junior high. I think it's going to be really great. Um, any further comment from council? OK, hearing none. Move on to city attorney's report. Jim? I don't have any comments. Thank you. City manager, Courtney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on Tuesday, July 24th at 6.30 at the DRS Center, we will be presenting on the topic of growth and development in Satellite Beach, and we're going to try to give kind of a history of land acquisition and beachfront acquisition to the community. You know, a lot of the rumors that we're seeing on Facebook, we're going to try to address some of those issues that people have. We're going to also talk about um, height and density zoning and new development projects that are going up now that were planned a long time ago but are just now getting built. Um, so we hope that we get a good crowd for that. Postcards went out to every resident um, for that meeting as well. Um, water testing is scheduled to begin, um, well, did begin July 17th with results back by July 31st. Um, I'm sp scheduled to present these results at a meeting with the community on the cancer cluster issue on August 5th at 2 p.m. at the Civic Center. Um, we may talk about revising that presentation a little bit at, at this point. Um, also, uh, Fire Chief Don Hughes has retired from the city after 25 years. Uh, and David Aphrodathy, who's in the audience tonight, is now our interim chief um, until further notice. So um, congratulations to him. We received an email from Debbie Robinson thanking the paramedic program for their community service, which is in your packet. We received a thank you note from Christine Hendricks expressing her appreciation to the fire department for their response to an auto accident. That's also in your packet. And also we received notification that we received a, the Firehouse Sub Safety Foundation grant for the police department to purchase a 2018 Suzuki ATV valued at $9,901. So that's great news. Um, and so I think, you know, that's an important thing for the community to know is a lot of those, those pieces of equipment we don't actually pay for with tax dollars. We get a lot of grants for those types of those things. And then last but not least, we have your fiscal year 1819 budget in front of you. So we hope that you review that. We will be holding a special meeting on August, I mean, July 25th to go over the entire budget in its entirety and, and go, you know, go through all that. So. Um, Brittany's staff, incredible job. Yeah. I mean, this good. Really, That's a really to look over it. <laughs> Very fancy. Really great. Easy to read. The tabs are great. And uh, very good. And thank you for the work. I can tell, it. You tell Brittany it must be that color pictures. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that. The pictures in there are great. The staff really put a lot of effort into making them fun, and, and it's, it's a good. Great. It's good. Uh, uh, just one thing I, regarding um, David's interim position. I'd just like the opportunity, if it's okay with you, if I could meet with David. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to sit down and talk with you, if that's okay. 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 Yeah, Thank of you. Course. Great. Thank you. Any, any questions for city manager? Nope. Courtney, anything else? Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to move up uh, agenda item 10 um, with permission of council. Um, discuss, take action on the placement of public work vehicles under an agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management. See that? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Um, this is uh, an item we actually, uh, I think, Courtney may have mentioned at one of our prior meetings where we were discussing um, capital asset needs and the difficulty in allocating, finding enough funding to allocate all the needs that the city has. And so we um, were considering something that we've never done before, essentially as a pilot program. And what this would entail is um, essentially leasing vehicles rather than purchasing them. So in the audience this evening with me, I have um, Sheldon Brown from Enterprise Fleet Management, so he'll be available to answer any questions you might have uh, beyond just the, the overview I'm about to give you. So essentially, uh, this will be uh, an item that is, there's an existing contract with uh, the City of Lake City. They have an RFP that is available to piggyback um, with, with those, those rates and terms, and so we'd be recommending waiver of bid process if we move forward with this. 
and uh, asking you to authorize the city manager, manager to execute the master equity lease agreement. But the long and short of it is we have, um, since Courtney became city manager, worked to um, be able to cycle through and update our fleet when it came to police vehicles, when it came to the fire trucks, when, when those opportunities arose, and some of the administrative vehicles when, when we were able to fund them. But we have had a very difficult time finding funding that we could dedicate toward public works vehicles. And um, as Alan will tell you, he's, he's asked every year, but we just haven't been able to put that money toward those vehicle replacements. And so, um, you know, it, it's beginning to cost us more to maintain these vehicles, but we just, you know, can't fund even a single one has been the problem. So what we, what we identified is that for a $40,000 line item, we can actually lease four vehicles and replace the four oldest, most expensive, you know, costing us the most money to maintain vehicles. And they're in, in your chart there, and you can see the mileage. These are, you know, the oldest vehicle was 1997, you know, a Chevy truck. So these are vehicles that have, have uh, served their purpose for the city for many, many years. And so what we're recommending is replacement of one dump truck that is in desperate need of replacement, um, one uh, F-250 pickup truck, and two uh, F-150s. The uh, dump truck will be actually on a 60-month lease, and that has to do with the value of the vehicle and the, the trade-in value when you get to the end of the lease. And the other three vehicles be, will be on a 12-month lease. What we'd like to do with your permission is try this out, um, get vehicles that are more reliable for public works, um, have those in play, and um, at the end of you know, this first year, we'll come back to you and, and talk about how the program went, what the results were and discuss whether, you know, at that point in time, we actually have the funding to buy vehicles outright. We want to buy the vehicles we've been leasing, because that's an option as well. Um, or if we want to continue with this lease, lease program. It's interesting, there have been a number of uh, cities and counties going towards this uh, type of program. And in fact, the uh, Brevard County Property Appraiser is a local example. Um, I believe most, if not all, of their fleet has transitioned over to a, a lease program uh, in, the, in recent years. Um, so with that, that's pretty much the, uh, the basic overview. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, or like I said, Sheldon is, you know, well-versed in uh, some of the nuances of this if you've got questions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Please. Um, so typically when you hear, I've never leased a vehicle, but when you hear about vehicles being leased, are we going to have, is it going to be the same scenario? You might want to come up. <laughs> come join. So my concern is these are public works vehicles. Um, how much are we going to be dinged for dings and scratches? And how, how does that work at the end of the lease? Because these are obviously going to be used hard, right? Um, what are we looking at for to protect ourselves to not have to pay out a, a big chunk of money at the end of the lease? Uh, yeah, definitely. So the way that the program works on those 12-month models, it really partners the uh, government ability with incentives with enterprise's ability to turn resale of vehicles into a site. So that's actually uh, the most prominent way that enterprise makes money is buying a vehicle <coughs> well, selling them at the right time. So ultimately it's doing the same thing uh, that you guys would be doing with that. Um, the way that the vehicle work with mileage and damage per se, hopefully on a 12 month term, your guys aren't doing too much to it. But I mean, even if they are, it, it's not something that you would be affected by in terms of fees. It would just affect resale at the end of term. Okay. Um, but a lot of that is in the numbers that you've been given has been uh, accounted for, um, and there are reserved numbers on the on the resale of vehicles. Okay. I had the same concern, exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I read it and I was like, this yeah. sounds good. And why didn't we pick the car that had 200,000 miles on it <laughs> to replace? <laughs> who, who insures the vehicles? Does Enterprise insure the vehicles or do we insure the vehicles? It, that would be us. It would be our insurance. Our, yep. mm -hmm. And then the 12 month period after the cycle starts again, you pick mm -hmm. up that particular pickup truck. And if we decide to do it, then we get That's another one. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Further questions? At this time, I'd like to open up public comment on agenda item 10. Ron Jagudis, resident of Satellite Beach, Florida. Um, I have a question about this. When we look at those vehicles that have been here a long time, 
Uh, they've lasted past their their period of of payments, obviously, if they were on payments. Has anybody looked at how long they lasted versus the payments? And do we have a number for the maintenance costs currently going on with them? And I know trucks last a while. Uh, I had one that lasted close to 300,000 miles. Ran good on a farm. So what do you get out of this? If this is the way you want to proceed, try it for a year and see what you think, fine. But maybe there should be a process to purchase these trucks, maybe even used ones for the city. Just saying. Thank you very much for your input. Podium still open. Comment on this agenda item. Bring it back to here. Then bring it back to council. Um, Alan, you keep these vehicles. I mean, I, I've seen them driving around town. There, even though sometimes you look at the mileage, they're pretty hard miles. That oh, absolutely. On. And I know we keep track of repair records, and you usually only come to us when they get to a point where that repair cost is exceeding. Right, and now they're at the point where they're just nickel and diming us. You know, there's a problem here, problem there, tie rod ends, you know, things like that. But the, the biggest problem is, is you have rust issues, you have, um, and they're work trucks. I mean, the, the one night in 1997, we've had it for 21 years. You know, you can't have a truck for 21 years and not have some some damage to the inside of the vehicle, you know, and, and the, um, the elements tear it up, tear them up. So, you know, we, we haven't had a new vehicle in, in eight years. And that, that tells you something. At least we're good about taking care of them, but at some point they outlive their useful life. And, you know, it's not like a personal vehicle. It, those, they're work trucks. Okay, thank can you I, very much. Can I come on over yes. <clears throat> So the way that the program is working, um, obviously pickup trucks can last a long time, but uh, because government's incentives are so high on these trucks, Basically what we're showing over 12 months is you can operate this vehicle for a cost neutral, so at basically no cost to, and the numbers show that, um, obviously a better vehicle, more fuel efficient, lower liability, uh, safer being out on the streets, uh, as well as maybe one, two oil changes, and that's it. So that's really how the program works and why it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Dominic? You know, I, I, I look at this as, you know, staff's come to us over the last few years with suggestions on, on how we can better utilize our dollars. And I think this is just another example of them coming to us and saying, let's try it. And, and I'm, I'm looking at this as um, I'm willing to do that. So um, I'd, I'd make a motion to authorize the waiver of the bid process to contract with Enterprise, Enterprise Fleet Management under the City of Lake City's RFP number. One zero two zero one zero. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Brimer. And just right, the dump truck is a sixty month. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? One more. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Uh, I did. Councilman Brimer. Councilman Gibson. Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mark Martino? Um, yes. I'd like to make another motion to authorize the city manager to execute the master equity lease agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management pending final approval of the agreement by the city attorney to lease four replacement vehicles for the Public Works Department. I'll second that too. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Brimer. Further discussion from Council? There are none, Dunmark? Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanaro? Yes. Yes, motion passes. Thank you for your work. Thank you, staff. Um, question, Jim. I, I think I maybe want to adjust the agenda again. Maybe I think looking at the audience, there's probably a fair number of people here for agenda item 12. Okay. Um, since it is a public hearing, does it, it's not time specific or anything. Okay. Is that okay with everyone, please? Yep. Okay. Yep. So at this time, we'll go to agenda item 12, the public hearing, discuss, take action on ordinance 1159. Jim.
Ordinance number 1159 and Ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending the coastal management slash conservation element of the 1998 Comprehensive Plan as amended April 5, 2017, based on the City's updated data and analysis of the Comprehensive Plan, revising and updating existing goals, objectives, and policies concerning properties within the City's Erosion Adaptation Action Area, EAA, A, in accordance with mandates set forth in Chapter 163, Florida Statutes. Authorizing transmittal of these amendments to the East Central Florida Regional Planning Council, State Land Planning Agency, and other applicable agencies for review and comment as required by Florida Statutes. Providing a conflicts clause and severability clause providing an effective date. It's a second reading of Ordinance Number 1159. Thank you. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance Number 1159 on second reading. I have a motion by second. I have a motion by <laughs> Councilman Brimer, second by Vice Mayor Montanero. Discussion from Council. I just want to make sure I'm fully clear on it. The setback is changing for homes that, if damaged in flood by floods and floods alone, will not be able to rebuild. Or is it? total damage regarding even if it's a fire or anything else. It doesn't matter. They won't be able to rebuild. That was kind of unclear. Does that make sense what I'm asking? So is it whatever house is past that line right now? Mm -hmm. I understand like in a hurricane and if we have high waters, at some point we all have to come to terms with the fact that the waves are just going to keep getting closer and closer and I get that. But if a house, example, burns to the ground because of the lightning strike, will they be able to rebuild in their existing footprint or do they have to rebuild past right. the so, new so line? So this is the conference of plan amendment, which is setting the, like, the bar That's policy. Standard. Okay. So um, you'll see those very specifics on rebuilding and um, the other setback changes we're making to lessen the impact, like to the front of the building and stuff like that. That'll all be in the ordinance, the ordinance. which okay. is 1160, and okay. that'll be coming back to you. Um, as soon as it goes to PNZ, which is going Monday, July 23rd. Monday, okay. July 23rd. All right. I read this all wrong, okay. so don't. So. And, and that, that also includes variance process because the board, the P PAB board, um, recommended that we go back to the drawing board, um, look at a look at the 15 feet, but they wanted to have some type of variance process in that. Um, okay. So we we put that together, and that'll be presented to them on Monday. Okay. So that is in there because I know you and I have talked on right. that on the variance that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further yeah. questions? And so that agenda is actually coming out tomorrow. I think it went out today. Or it went out today. It went, it went out today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's on the web? It should be on the web. It's on the web. Okay. I'll open up for public comment when we're finished here. I will as soon as we open for public. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Further questions from? Council, everybody okay? Yep. Okay. At this time, open up for agenda. Excuse me, agenda item 12 for public comment. Roger Goodis, six resident of Satellite Beach and concerns with the property located at 620 Ocean Street. Curtain ordinance number 1159 is simply a full taking of property with no mitigation, no variance process provision. The effects, the value on the property, appraisals, possibly obtaining financing, including insurance, and then why, you know, why was a protest, I don't know if everyone's aware, but a protest was filed on the first reading on 1159, and it was dropped due to the fact that it would go back, presumably, to the Planning Advisory Board and be looked at. And then we have a companion bill, Ordinance 1160, you're passing 1159 that may contradict 1160. And to get this thrown at us again is, is absurd. 
there's going to be a nightmare here. And then to add further, the clarity. I'd like to know, whereas the city has reviewed the proposed amendments to the city to the comprehensive plan and said proposed amendments were reviewed by the city's local planning agency. Who is the city's local planning agencies? Is that the PAB board? Yes. Yes. It is the PAB board. Mm -hmm. They didn't approve this. They didn't approve the 15 foot. If I'm not mistaken, Courtney, 1160 will be the one where those are in. But I have nothing in front of me. Well, 1160 is not on our I, I can't. Excuse me, let, me, let me answer your question. You might not agree, but let me just answer the question. 1160 is not in front of us. 1160 still has to go to B and Z, and yeah. then we'll be back to us. And that has this, will have the information on it that I believe you are asking for. This is 1159. Well, my additional point is, if it's a companion, 1160. You're passing 1159 right now. Is it truly going to work with 1160? That's almost double jeopardy for us. We don't know what's in 1160. You can tell me what's in there. We dropped the protest because what we were portrayed to think. And it was not done. Thank you. And then I have a point of order. I have a neighbor who's not healthy right now, and I'd like a couple of minutes to present his case. Three, three minutes. minutes. I'm everybody okay. three, no, I'm letting everybody have three minutes. You have so three I minutes. don't have a point of order no, to sir. speak for my neighbor who's no, got sir. prostate cancer. No, sir. I don't have, even though I've got verbal authorization. That's fine, sir, but no, three minutes. Really? Three minutes, yes, sir. Three Amazing. Minutes, Amazing. This is a huge Thank thing. You. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, Courtney, will you clarify a little bit on 1159 to 1160, just for the audience, the difference? Well, 1159 is the broad comp plan change, okay. which when we adopt the impl implementing land development regulation changes has to be consistent with what we're doing today. So, so that is that, you, you know, we can't make, we can't adopt an ordinance later that's inconsistent with this. So um, that's, that's one point. Um, secondly, um, it, it's, it's many times when the process goes through the boards um, and through staff analysis and, you know, through DCA or DEO, I'm sorry, um, language changes from transmittal to adoption, and that's what's happening here. So. Thank you. Podium still open. There was a gentleman in the audience. Um, excuse me, sir. Do you have a, you had your hand up before and I said I would take it. So please, please come to the podium and then I'll get the next gentleman in the back. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I got him. Thank you. Yes. Robert Terrigan. Uh, I live at 632 Ocean Street and um, we're part-time residents, so we're not here all the time, so forgive me. I met most of you or seen most of you, but I don't know. Uh, we live in a townhouse, so I'm a center unit townhouse, so it's a sort of unique situation as opposed to an individual house. Uh, and I think we're the only set of townhouses in Satellite Beach, if I'm not mistaken. There are some further north and there are some further south. Okay. But the, uh, the restrictions that are being placed on us, with the, especially the breezeway and the rest like that, really starts to squeeze in on each of our individual houses. If you have a, a larger house and it's 72 feet, that's roughly you know, what our building is, and you take away 12 feet because of the breezeway requirements, because we have 100 feet in the front end, um, you know, then you've got a 60 foot wide house. Well, that's no real big problem in our site. You've still got plenty of room. In our particular case, though, because of that, it ends up taking away about 20% of the width of our property. And then, of course, with the 15 feet, we push it even further forward and the rest like that. And so it just, it just seems like it's going to really affect the overall value of our house and whatever if we do tend to rebuild. And I'm sorry, but earlier, the reason I was raising my hand was, again, I'm trying to remember everything no here that goes on with the city and the terminology and the rest like that. But I think at the last meeting, you were supposed to review 1159 and maybe rewrite it yep. with some exceptions or yep. variance approvals and, and the rest. Is that what's in the current bill so what, that's being voted on? Right. So what, what we did was, because the planning, the planning board wanted a variance process, so that's what the language change discusses. It, it basically says that the land development regulations will include 
it's basically standards for construction and things like that. Um, so we can create a variance process in the ordinance that's coming forward Monday, okay. which is in there. there yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. It's not 1159. 1160. I'm sorry, 1160. 1160. 1160. Ordinance yes, 1160. Um, at the 50, I'm sorry. Yeah, 1160. 1160. If I'm not mistaken, at the last meeting, one of the recommendations that I heard from most of the board members was and I think it was, what was brought up was on the 25 feet, there was some variances if you went with the county, but they've never issued one. So, so the other, we wanted 15 because all those right. board members said, hey, how about variance? So, okay. yes. We created we a little that. bit more lenient process on the variances. Okay. But the, but the other issue is um, for you to understand is right now you have a 25 foot front setback. The ordinance that we're putting in front of the, the, um, the planning and zoning board or planning advisory board shifts the whole building up. So even that while we're requiring a 15 foot in the back by the ocean, we're reducing the front to five feet. So you have a shift towards your property. And in that way, we're just basically trying to shift the whole property up to the, you know, away from the ocean. And so we're not reducing the building envelope footprint. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. It's just a problem. Ocean Street is a different street because it comes at an angle. Yeah. You know, you take Beach Street down here, and it's really a north-south, and the backyards and the properties are pretty much the same. We are angled, and of course, well, I, I live about halfway up the street. You know, it becomes much more narrow. So that coastal construction is another C in there, well, whatever the other, that stands the for. The other opportunity, which Mr. Jagudis brought into my attention in a meeting, was the possibility of making that road a one-way, and we look at, you know doing a, um, a right-of-way vacation and providing property to the property owner from the road, and then we take, so we basically do a swap. Like, we get uh, that little area in the back by the, by the dunes, which is where, which is a good thing for you, but we're trying to move the buildings closer, you know, so, you know, so you'll get more buildable area with the street. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's some I, of the I creative things that we could do. From, and, and like you yeah. said, we're just a little bit Thank in a unique situation. Have, again, yeah. 1160 will be from the P and Z and then to us twice. Right. So there'll yeah. be plenty of time for that. Okay. okay. It's Thank just you. we're concerned about that. And if there's any way of grandfathering in something for those folks that are here now and the rest like that, I mean, it's just the overall value of the property and what we've bought and what we've worked so hard for and the rest like and, that. And, and I can tell you from our end, what we're trying to do is make sure you keep that value of your property. We don't want it, um, and we don't want to see you get destroyed where yeah. you can't have it. Sure. Okay. We pay some taxes, thank too, on that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Gentlemen in the back, thank you. Good evening. Maurice Arcadia. I'm a local attorney. I'm representing five homeowners located at 610, 620, 626, 630, and 634 Ocean Drive, or Ocean Street, sorry. Um, but my position, or I submit to you, that um, 1159 should be done in conjunction with 1160. There are many good ideas to minimize or mitigate the impact that it's going to have in many of homeowners, and that's all the time I keep hearing that it's going to be 1160. But uh, to do them separately, what, you're going to have a procedural mess. You're going to have a protest on 1159 that is going to be ongoing uh, to the state of Florida. And then you're going to be passing 1160, and uh, who knows what the state will do uh, concerning that. There's still plenty of time within your 180-day window to not table it and do it together at 1159, and you might uh, prevent a lot of procedural messes. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Podium still open. Dale Abrams, Ocean Street. Um, how many of you have seen a map of these properties that are going to be affected? Besides the map from the building official. No, I've seen. I've seen maps. Yeah, I've seen okay. maps. Yeah. Okay. Um, I grew up across the street from there. Mm -hmm. There are going to be. I know we talked about 26 homes mm -hmm. affected and then I think two empty lots they're going to be yeah hand them out there's there's going to be condos that are going to be affected the colonnade 
Los Olas um, Sand Sand Dollar. Is it called Sand Dollar? That older one? I think it's something like that. So there's going to be a huge impact. And at the end of the day, this really is a taking. And for those of you who may not be aware of this, in 1987, after the major storm, Thanksgiving storm, there was litigation due to erosion that occurred in the Atlantic and also in Cape Canaveral. Um, you know, I have to agree with Ron, you're looking at valuations, you're looking at insurance issues, and you're looking at mortgages. Okay, so who's who is going to lend you money to purchase a property if you've got these issues? And of course, these issues need to be disclosed when you purchase or buy a property. I believe you just did that with the peg legs deal. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you really need to think this through as far as that's concerned. Um, I've been here for 20 years, okay? We have never flooded on our street from the ocean. We're 14 feet. We're higher than we are here. So, you know, I think you need to look at this, and as far as these maps are concerned, um, you can all look at them, and I'm gonna take them back because I'm bringing them to the meeting on Monday to show P Planning Advisory Board, okay? But there's the lines there. If you can't see them, I brought a magnifying glass so you can see them. There's a purple line and there's a blue line. And I got these, these documents from DEP. So take a close look at it and see who was affected. And then somebody was asking me, why on earth did you allow those two houses to be built on Shell Street? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> you know. The code allows it. Because the code allows it. It's, they're legal. We can't stop it. We want to try to make this as safe as possible for everybody. And um, I mean, we got a property that's for sale right now on Beach Street that could be affected because of what you're proposing to do. Okay, thank you very much. Public comment still open. John? John Ferguson, 135 Maple. I was part of the group that made the original recommendation to do this. This is hard times with coastal erosion. And I would suggest after I sit down, the gym have a good discourse so the folks in the audience really understand the difference between 1059 and 1060, 1059 has to go through DCA, come back, be adopted before the council can do anything with 1060. So there's a process here, and you can't just send them out together because then the folks in Tallahassee will have problems with it. And as far as the setbacks and stuff, and maybe somebody needs to do a little clarification, at least in the version. Can you hand them out later for us, please? We have a speaker up here now. Thank you. In the version that I'd last seen, the front setback, the side setbacks could be changed. There were different adjustments. Build it could be built higher so you wouldn't lose square footage, things like that. And the question came up, why did they allow to build on Shell Street? Because the code said they could and they got variances. Those houses should not have been built the way they were built. But that's the changing times. And if folks think it's hard now, wait for 10 or 20 years and see what happens. And by the way, it is not flooding that's the issue. It's coastal erosion. That's why it's an erosion adaptation action area. It's erosion, the loss of sand. It's not water in your living room. Thank you. Public comments still open? Hearing no further public comments, bring it back to the council and staff. Courtney, so this one happened. 
Mr. Michelle, this one goes to DCA first, correct? 1150. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Mayor. This and Council. Mr. Scudis, please. We'll get those if you leave them with our city clerk. I think She'll we hand get them to sure. us. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Um, for clarification, this is a two pronged process. Um, the city has worked uh, long and hard on data and analysis uh, and an understanding of what's happening uh, with our coastline uh, over the last several years and has modified the comprehensive plan to include both an inland uh, adaptation area and an erosion uh, adaptation area. The inland one being over on the uh, South Patrick side, if you will, and the erosion adaptation area east of A1A. And they each have their own issues. And a year or so ago, you modified the comprehensive plan to uh, introduce uh, this area, the concerns of the area, and how you want to proceed with um, governing and regulating uh, proper development within the area. This is just part of that process. It is kind of the next step. It's to literally draw a line in the sand to the extent that because of what Mr. Fergus just said is exactly correct. The issue in this particular area uh, stems from erosion, storm surge, hurricanes, um, sea level rise, climate change, and many other unique characteristics, the most troublesome of which is erosion. And, um, and so erosion not only affects the private sector, but it also affects the public sector. And we have investments in that area as well. And so in order to really make good decisions and encourage both the private and public sector to make good decisions, it was time to um, put into the comp plan, which is your constitution, if you will, your global policy, your 30,000 foot uh, level look-see of, of the, the general policies legislatively, what you want to do with a particular area. So you've said, okay, first of all, we're going to establish this area, which we've done. We have a map that shows it. And we have um, set forth some basic parameters that will uh, be further fleshed out within your land development code. And that's where it should be. The comp plan is not where you have um, detailed specific uh, requirements and, and, uh, and, and um, I, the minutia. I'm going to call it the minutia. It's important minutia, but that belongs in your land development code. So what this says is basically a few basic premises um, that's, that sets forth what we have to do in the land development code. And that is that any new development and redevelopment that comes into this area east of A1A, it's going to have to be set back 15 feet from your coastal construction control line. Uh, if you have a pre-existing building uh, or a structure that's located in this area, if it's impacted by those things I mentioned, erosion, storm surge, hurricanes, or sea level rise, or other uh, disaster of that may rebuild uh, their pre-existing building or structure no closer than 15 feet land of the CCCL. But then the land development regulations will set forth what that development criteria is, any deviations from that criteria, what those standards will be, what you have to do in order to justify, or what conditions um, you may be affected by that would enable you to rebuild in your current spot. And so uh, the, the implementing uh, Ordinance 1160 is going through the process that it goes through. 1159 is going through the process that it goes through. It's been to DEO. DEO had no, um, no issues with it. It's come back to you. And um, we have made very sure to, um, to the best of our knowledge and ability to make that 1159 and 1160 consistent. 1159 is the governing legislation, 1160 is the implementing bill. And so we will now take the implementing bill through its process of the PAB on Monday, July 23rd, and it comes back to you, Lenore, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what the date is in August. The first? You have August 1st and then you have September 5th. Thank you. Um, so it'll have its two readings before City Council uh, in August and September. So there's um, 
there, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion on that. Um, we have addressed the non-conforming. We have identified um, variance opportunities. Uh, what will be allowed to even apply for a variance? What will be not allowed to apply for a variance? And what um, under what conditions uh, the um, the homeowner will be able to either rebuild on their existing footprint, which may be seaward of that coastal construction control line, or under what conditions, if there's substantial damage or it's a vulnerable structure or in an imminent danger, that it would have to be um, uh, be set back. But again, as Mr. Ferguson, I believe, um, as Barker indicated, we have um, in removing it. From this line, we have expanded the envelope both on the sides and in the front. So we've eliminated side setbacks except for the breezeway, and we have virtually eliminated the front setback or the western setback um, to five feet. And the, and the height over in that area is substantial so that uh, there's ample room and an ample envelope. Uh, for both reasonable use of the property as well as substantial use of the property. Okay, thank you. Mark, you had a question? Just in Rochelle or, or Courtney, whoever wants to clarify this. I mean, John touched on it, but we'll clarify why 59 has to go forward now versus versus having it as a companion with the other one. Just clarify. Well, we basically do your conference plan first, okay. and then your implementing ordinance follows that okay so so that's that's really why so it's not confusing so you can't you can't adopt a, an ordinance without the comp plan being done first okay um, and so this becomes a template before right. they work. gotcha okay I just, yeah. wanted that, just wanted that clarified and just to to be um, clear the the city is not taking property the ocean is taking property the city is trying to help people move their properties closer and away from the ocean and quite frankly protecting the city because like you just heard tonight the other question is why did the city let them build so close so you know we will get a challenge either way and we're at that stage and this is a highly eroded um, designated a highly eroding area by, by DEP. You can just Google it and it pops right up. We put sand on the beach every four years, basically, trying to shore up our dunes every time we have a storm. There, this, this is not an area where we can repeatedly do what we conti we're continuing to do because it's, it's putting people too close to the ocean. And, you know, when, when we are looking at protecting the beaches from hardening, in the future, these are the types we have to type of steps we have to take, and that, that's really the purpose of this entire endeavor: is to protect the property owner, protect the city, and protect the the dune, the natural dune system. Thank you. So, are you looking at zero lot lines minus the breezeway? What kind of things are you looking at? Uh, the front would be five feet. Okay. And the sides, we eliminated the setback for that particular property within that zoning district uh, and set up within this EAA district uh, kind of it, its own requirements. So on okay. the sides at zero, okay. except for meeting the breezeway. breezeway that's and that's so okay. it can be all the way this way. With the, there, there is a five foot uh, requirement um, elsewhere in the code where it's a landscape strip, but that mm -hmm. can be part of the breezeway. That counts towards the breezeway. Yeah, that, that was so. the question I was asking, is zero except for the breezeway. Right. So you got, I got you now. Okay, that, that answers it. Kind of get flexibility to move Amen. the property no, I'm with around. You. I got you. you know. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was one of the things I'm glad you clarified and brought it up because I know that one gentleman talked about the breezeway and I know when we initially talked about this we were talking about doing something with the whole envelope to make it easier for people to, you know to be able to utilize their property a little bit better so right you can shift one yep. way or the other okay great so I, basically what we've done is actually given more room to build mm -hmm. correct yeah. I guess yes. the plan anyhow yes yeah. Do we do we know um, do we have a percentage of because there's going to be some buildings that regardless of what we're doing are going to be unbuildable on their lots? Do we know how many properties those are going to be? Um, I do not. No, we do not. And I'll, I'll tell you because um, for different situations, if it's erosion, there is a that's sort of its own category. Um, that's the most serious of categories. Mm -hmm. If if you're 
Um, if the land is eroded out from underneath you, then that's a very serious situation, right, and we have to have managed retreat. If there's um, damage to your foundation um, that's, that makes it a vulnerable structure and it's substantial, then it can't be repaired and you're going to have to go. But if it's, if it's less than substantial damage, if it's storm surge, if it's uh, hurricanes, if it's um, sea level rise, then there's um, opportunities for you to rebuild within your current, uh, on your current foundation, within your current um, uh, envelope, basically, um, as long as there's no damage to the foundation. So um, there's a lot, a lot of flexibility built in, but yet okay. there's, you know, some, some stringency too. So. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so the other thing too is when you look at unbuildable, if you look at the properties now, they're unbuildable today. Uh, I mean, they couldn't build what they have there today, even even with our current code. So I think that needs to be pointed out too. Mm -hmm. um, That's so, a fair point. Yeah, some of these some of these structures, if you see that line going in the middle of their property, they can't do anything now. So that that needs to be you know clear. Because right now, if I can just um, tag or tag him on that, right now your code says RM3, commercial, RM4, uh, those properties um, who are adjacent to the, the CCCL, the Coastal Construction Control Line, that's the rear setback. Mm -hmm. um, there's no more going seaward of that. So right now it's the CCCL. And what we're, uh, what, what this proposes and what 1160 proposes is to create a buffer between the CCCL and um, the, the edge of the building envelope um, to create a protection for the private property owner. And that's the 15 feet? Exactly. Correct. Okay. And, and protection for the city's dune system. Correct. Because the more, um, the more pressure we get for, for beach renourishment projects and the less sand we can obtain, things like that, the um, more disasters that come through, you'll see more interest in hardening the, mm -hmm. the dune system. And that's one of the things we're trying to avoid, considering we're one of the high sea turtle areas, you know, for, for nesting and, um, you know, the natural dune system is something we want to protect. Okay. And that's very clear in our conference's plan. It always has been. Okay. Thank you. Further questions from council at this time? Do we have a motion already? Yes. Okay. A second. Yes. Um, Further discussion? Jim, anything? Thank you. Laura? Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. And it'll go to PNZ at 11, or PAV um, 1160 will. On Monday. And Monday. you can go on our web today and see that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda, back to agenda item seven, presentation of, let me ask everybody, is good, need a break or anything? Or? No, I'm good. I, I didn't like that one. Five minutes, yeah. Okay, at all. Uh, this time we'll take a recess and come in for five minutes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Let everybody get out. Huh? Yeah. 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 Did you just reset? I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is that a good move? Ready? I am. <laughs> Reconvene the council meeting July 18th, 2018, approximately 810. Um, this time we'll go to agenda item seven, presentation of overview of final citizens budget committee report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, you will recall that at your last council meeting on July the 3rd, you had the formal presentation by the Citizens Budget Committee presenting their results, their recommendations uh, as a result of their series of meetings over a uh, recent three-month period. Just for purposes of discussion of this item, for those who may not be familiar with it, essentially uh, City Council uh, solicited members of the community to come together in a citizen's budget committee um, to provide us with recommendations and advice as we go into this uh, upcoming budget year. And part of the reason for that is we're faced with a number of financial challenges. Two hurricanes in one fiscal year affecting our reserves. Um, we are um, struggling to appropriately and significantly fund infrastructure, capital needs to, to continue to, to rise up. We've had a, a number of unfunded 
uh, unbudgeted, I should say, um, items, including, as a big example, the community center AC that went out last year, you know, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on these things that we, we did not have uh, available. But as things are not maintained because we haven't had the funding, we're, we're looking for additional funds uh, to handle that issue. And then probably the other biggest thing to mention is the expected uh, additional homestead exemption that is going to be on the ballot this November if approved in the next fiscal year for 1920, the city would lose approximately $600,000 in revenue on an ongoing basis. So seven members uh, of the committee, uh, excuse me, of the uh, city were appointed to the budget committee. They had several goals. They were to review revenues, find um, opportunities to increase existing revenues or identify new revenues. They were to look at expenditures and identify um, changes to those expenditures to maintain existing services but, but lower those costs to provide those services and just any other, uh, make any other suggestions on changing service delivery. So they, they did a great job. Um, uh, you met five of the seven who were able to attend the meeting on July 3rd and they, they have this written report that documents everything that they put together, including all of the recommendations that, um, that they presented to you at that last meeting. So that's what this document is. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Questions? Um, before I just want to state, you know, great job. I know you had a minimal amount of time, really, and I think the committee was really good overall. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, it was interesting, I was talking to people about this committee, and myself, I, I knew really nobody on the committee, um, Larry a little. But other than that, they were a whole new group of eyes looking at this. And I think to me, that was the important thing, was to get that, you know, different group of eyes sitting down and seeing it. So please tell them thank you, and thank you for putting this. Other questions? I just had a, just a quick comment. I know we're trying to rush, but um, the new revenue increased existing revenues page. Um, I thought they had some really good ideas. Um, it was it was pretty. I love, and I just want to just go out there and say this that I would love to see the rec center add more academic programs, and I love the idea of you know doing STEM or STEAM or or the robotics programs or Lego robot. I mean, we really being where we're at in this engineering, it would be really nice to really offer some after school. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, anything I can help to get that going, I'm all in on that. Well, I'll just, I'll, I'll say based on Cassie's comments, our recreation director at the, at the meetings, um, the only things that limit us, it seems, would be availability, <coughs> you know, if the story filled up by nursing programs, and finding teachers, which at, for different classes, she mentioned, I don't know about robotics, but she mentioned like mm -hmm. certain art classes, it's been hard to find and keep teachers who would come and provide those. And then of course there's the I know hours. everybody. Just have them come to me. I will find I'll teachers. <laughs> and if we're interested or we want to do this, um, you know, my husband, I mean, there's the robot wars or just, sorry, I just, we can have a conversation about this okay. at offsite. Let's okay. do that. Thank you. I'll be brief. This is one of the first committees that's ever been done in our city where we as council try to stay away. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to look at what got presented and all this information, I'm just blown away by the breadth of what they undertook and what they went through. So, yeah. uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Great job. Okay. Any further discussion? Let me open up for public comment on this agenda item. The floor is open. There are no public comment. Back to council staff. Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda number eight, discuss take action on beach access. Um, Courtney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, on October 17, 2007, we entered into a developer's agreement with Oceana Club LLC and developer Maurice Kodzi, um, basically for the um, former Ramada site. In that developer's agreement, we requested and received a six-foot easement on the south border of the property for the purpose of a beach access, and this will join another six-foot easement on, on the Lung RX property. And uh, as soon as we get this in place, we'll begin um, permitting and construction of that walking path and dune crossover um, and open that to the public. So we're requesting your approval for that this evening. Thank you. And questions on it? Is there, and I can't remember back, I remember I was doing this seven years ago or whatever. Yeah. Are they going to help and develop that? Yeah. I think they're not going to help us put trees or no, I can't remember what exactly 
we had told them that no, we they were just giving us the property the property yep. is that yep. correct mm -hmm. okay thank you any further okay do I have a motion I'll make, I'll make a Go ahead, Mark. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the beach access easement with Oceana Oceanfront Development LLC. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brian Mersock, second by Councilman Osmer. At this time, open up agenda item eight for public comment. Hearing none, back to Council. Any further? This was this was a great deal that we did with Maurice Kotze. Not only did we get the three acre, you know, the three acres of Gemini there, but we got this at the same time, so it was a great opportunity. And we have I the think one the on surfers the, would have rioted if we well, didn't we have the other, no, We have the other one, too, still, RCs, on the other side by the wall. Side, yeah. So yeah. We, we gained one, and as soon as that development's done, that other one will open back up. So. Just one quick question of John. It doesn't have anything to do with this motion or anything. How, are those condos pretty much on track for finishing on time, or how, how's... Yes, yeah, see, the south building... I would say within, uh, we'll conservatively say 60 days, but I, I suspect maybe sooner. The, the South Building and the Clubhouse are due to come online at the same time. Uh, but they, they got some cosmetics and, you know, some things. Um, we got, we got uh, the easement. This is one of the reasons why we got the easement, because they're anxious to try to get their COs, and we made it really clear that no CO without the easement, as well as um, the uh, uh, landscape enhancement money, which we also just received. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's on track. I think the north building is set for, like, July 2019 okay. to be completed. And it, it's uh, okay. probably close to about 90%, if not 95% sold out. That's what south building is sold out. Okay. South building is sold out? Yeah. yeah. Really? Okay. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. Thank John, you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Any further discussion? Nope. Okay. One more. Councilman Gibson? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item nine, discuss take action on memorandum of understanding with Brevard County for the Intergovernmental Radio Communications Program. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Back in 2007, City Council approved a Memorandum of Understanding with Brevard County for the purpose of establishing an advisory committee comprised of representatives of various city and county members to basically agree on what the $12.50 monies would be used for. And those dollars are money that is actually on assessed any traffic a violation where there's a civil penalty. Those dollars are per floor statutes dedicated for purchasing components for maintenance and upkeep of the countywide radio system, essentially for public safety response and all that. So this advisory committee, this is the agreement that governs what they do and how they, how they're, um, how the committee is constructed, representatives from different cities, et cetera. So the county has simply provided us with an updated <coughs> memorandum of understanding that was approved by the county commissioners um, on April 10, 2018. Some minor changes in the construction of the advisory committee um, our city representative is Mary Johnson, who is our communications supervisor, and she's been on this committee for many years, and she'll continue there. Uh, so no, no effect to us there. And there's some other language change that directs um, or clarifies how um, different parties could terminate the agreement and what things could lead to termination. But uh, essentially, very minimal change to this, and this is just something that carries on as it has for a number of years. Okay, thank you. This, this, do we do this every year? I mean, this agreement is it, every couple of years. It hasn't it's come back to us since we yeah, approved it, it in 07. Right. I guess I'm just getting old. I remember doing this thing <laughs> time, so. Getting? Sorry. Getting. What? Getting old? I'll make a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the memorandum of understanding with Brevard County for intergovernmental radio communication program. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilwoman Gibson. I'll second it. At this time, right. open up for public comment on agenda item nine. Hearing any public comment? Any further counsel? Hearing none? One more? Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Alderman? Yes. Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Mayor Yes, motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 11 now, resolution 1004. Jim? Resolution number 1004, a resolution of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, honoring 50 years of municipal home rule in the Florida Constitution and committing to an educational initiative to help Floridians understand this beneficial right 
providing an effective date to re reading of resolution number 1004. This is Dom's area here. I'll make yeah. a motion to approve resolution 1004. <coughs> Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Montanero. Second by Councilman Brimer. This is um, a resolution that the Florida League of Cities right. basically put out for all the cities to do. So. Yeah. Thank you, Dom. Any further discussion? At this time, open up for public comment on agenda item 11. <coughs> Hearing none, back to Council. Lenore? Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Bryan? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Yes, yes motion passes. Thanks, Dominic, for bringing it to us. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Moving on to agenda item 13. My count's right here. Discuss, take action on agreement with Dean Mead, Edgerton, Lumworth. Um, I'll leave the others to represent the city. Okay. To represent the city of interest in the state level. Courtney. Thank you, Mayor. The city is looking at um, for the next legislative session issues with the vacation rentals, um, as well as we're trying to submit a legislative appropriation request for our canal dredging issues, um, which actually is good news at this point because the county has agreed to go ahead and file our permitting for us um, so we can get ahead on the permitting and, um, and in, with the anticipation that hopefully we'll get this appropriation through. So we would like to hire a lobbyist to follow that through. This is the same lobbyist that Indian Harbor Beach is hiring, and we met with her, um, Carly, and, and kind of went over what her experience and things were, and we felt that she was definitely um, able to handle this, and we would get that kind of a, you know, I guess a, a better rate because we're combining forces with Indian Harbor Beach, and they're, they're also wanting to do the same legislative appropriation, so we're going to be submitting that at the same time as they are. So um, we're hoping to get this... Um, lobbyists on board. At the same time, we're hoping to decrease the, um, we're in negotiations to de decrease our federal lobbyist workload this coming budget year so we can bring this in as a wash financially in the budget. Okay. Thank you. Discussion from council? As long as it's a wash. So this is Carrie <laughs> okay with that. <laughs> That's correct. It's or Carrie, I'm sorry. Working okay. with? Yeah. Okay. She has ties here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. She, she grew does. up here. Yep. It's great that we're working with somebody that knows and understands the dynamics mm -hmm. of what we're dealing with here. She very clearly understands water issues, um, environmental issues. Yeah, we, you know, the Muckins are going to be a, mm -hmm. a huge issue. And we yeah. That and Reynolds. Yep. I mean, I, those mm -hmm. are two major mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Any further? Mm -hmm. At this time, open up for public comment on agenda item 13. Hearing none. I'll make Second. a motion to approve the mayor to execute the agreement with Dean Mead et al. to represent the city's interest at the state level. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Lenore? Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Bryner? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Moving on to agenda item 14. Take action, discuss, take action on. Council goal setting for 1819. So, um, started. I, I can tell you mine. I think the facilities and infrastructure to me has got to be one on the top. I mean, yeah, Indian I River agree. Lagoon and so forth is is there, and that's very big. And being a county, I look at that and Home Rule being more county type things. And though yes, we want them, but to me. The infrastructure and our facilities, to me, of just because of the sheer cost of this stuff. And the age of them, and too. And the age of them. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I'd have to go with that. Yeah, I invest in, and in, you invest in your assets and you maintain them or they cost more money down the road. We don't want to be like in the boat that the county is in right now. And, and, and again, yes, continue to work on projects for the lagoon. I think to me that's important, but we're tied in with. Have sent sales tax committee. Courtney sits on that. I sit on the NEP. So I think you know that's important, but we don't directly mm -hmm. you know, handle that. So well, I definitely think the local business. We, we we need to get more. We're starting to see it grow. We're getting you know doubles coming here. We've got the Shuck Shack is coming to that building. So for me, it's it's, it's just as much of a priority as to start filling those vacant commercial spaces and get those empty lots built. I mean. 
we definitely need that to be a priority, I think, as well. Can we can we look at that particular item and maybe tie it into what we really need to do on A1A is to look at increasing the height mm -hmm. to accommodate being able to do something with these parcels of land because the yeah. way they sit right now, they're too small, they're non-conforming, and unless we're able to do something on the west side of A1A that's similar to the building that's right across the street from the A-frame, that when that burned down, council at the time had the ability to go up a little bit higher and we accommodated them and they built a beautiful building there. We need to be able to do that on the rest of the parcels of A1A and we need to do something to get our, our citizens to understand that we're not going to be able to do anything with these <coughs> until we're able to do something with height. Yeah. And that should be part of whatever this goal is here. If we're okay. going to do this, we, it's got to be a two-pronged effect to move forward. Got it. Sounds good. Any other? Mm -hmm. okay. um, one one other thing. thing. Okay, go. The, the money that um, the, the county approved yesterday from tourist development tax, are we going to be able to use any of that to demuck too? I mean, can, are there projects that we can use some of that funding for? I think if we had, a, if it had a tourism related focus, but okay. we don't really have we that in our community. Can we, uh, can we help, help them beach, build our beach crossover at the new uh, 10 feet, 12 feet that we just got? That's yeah. tourist mm -hmm. development. But it's not directed to the Indian River Lagoon. Well, they do community projects that are tourist related. And you that's know, so that's really, yeah, we had like a major, yeah. But when they, when you look at like what their projects are, it's like the Vieira soccer stadium, you know, an astroturf and and building that so they can bring in amateur soccer leagues. And then the um, they're they're doing a small project. The only small project I know of is Indian Harbor Beach with the um, oars and paddles, largely because of the paddling people. Um, but the, most of their projects are very large regional tourist attractions that, like Lori Wilson Park, um, which is a massive park, you know, redoing that. That's, all, that's actually a, almost a $30 million project. So. We'll see if we, I mean, can't hurt. Well, I mean, see, I mean, I'm saying it is a famous you, surf spot. <laughs> you ever see our beach on a Saturday and Sunday, there's a whole <laughs> lot, lot of people, people. here. And well, what, we would just need to know what projects you want to do, okay. you know, because oh. it's they're not, gonna, the they're not going to help you maintain it, but they'll help you expand no, it we to attract tourists. And even even the the, um, even Gemini Park. I mean, if if we ask, if they say no, they say no. But I mean, if we can look at doing some of the improvements that we're looking at there, mm -hmm. we did great on grants before. So, yeah. the, so that park, the the vision for the from the community was to make it a pedestrian park for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's in the very it's tourist. still touristy. Okay. There's See really what you tourists there. Especially since we don't have vacation I'm trying to rentals. kindly tell you that we don't really have a tourist economy in Satellite Beach, so it would be very hard to justify tourists to live on one would have, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I other thing? I will also like to throw this out there, just for, since it's talking about tourist issues, is you just need to consider what strings they attach, considering the tourist oriented thing is not something the city is really historically looked at, and especially when you're looking at vacation rentals as an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good stuff. Point taken. Um, one thing, and this is kind of maybe inner city, I've said this, and maybe it's kind of a, I can make it a goal to the fire chief or temporary fire chief. Great fire department. I just want everybody to know that it's a great fire department. Yeah. And I just think. They need to sell themselves better out there. And I think as a goal, they need to sh show that to the community. I guarantee you, we know what they do. Mm -hmm. But not the number of people, I think, that should really know no, I the great service don't. they provide. And, so, and the, the police does it. They do their police academy, and it gets out. But I want to see them to sell themselves a little better. They're, they're actually developing that but, right now. Yeah. Well, just saying. Okay. A PR. They need a PR person. Um, since this is a, an agenda item, I'll open up for public comment. Hearing none. Council. Um, consensus. Consensus. Yep. Yeah, right. Right. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 15. Please take a look at it um, for 
the next meeting. Yes. Um, proposed special meeting, um, the 25th. Yeah. Uh, we got a few next week, so. Yeah, we got one on the 24. 24. We have, remember, that's structure. That's the structure. 25th. Um, so please take a look at that for the budget. The next page for future meetings, the August 1st regular meeting. Okay. Great. Yes, and I see um, <laughs> 1160 is first on the list. Okay. Let's keep it there. Moving on to agenda item 16, approval of minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from June 20th, the City Council work Workshop meeting and the City Council regular meeting on July 3rd, 2018. I think that's it. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gibson, second by Councilman Osmer. Further discussion? Hearing none, Lenore? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Uh, staff, thank you very much again for the budget. Courtney, thank you for your hard work. Um, appreciate it. Any further business? <laughs> Meetings adjourned. A little light reading on my plane trip. My um, plane trip. Courtney, oh, yeah. Courtney, we got to have a talk. So it's 8:30. When I became mayor, I said no meetings past nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> and not only that, yeah. but Mark Brimer, when he chaired the meeting, he got out in like 15 minutes. That's because you're trying so to. Uh, maybe that's it's the you're chair. Trying to. <laughs> well, but, but I had to beat this, which kept us here until 11 o'clock at night. Right. <laughs>